Look guys, I got a solar panel. And it's powering this fan. Just kidding, I got 50 of them. F yeah. One row done. We got 10 panels out, let's go. Oh crap, I put the wires on the wrong side. I have to turn this whole row around. Done. So obviously I'm gonna connect them in series, but this is actually quite dangerous because they're 25 volts a panel and I have 10 of them. So it's gonna be, wait, do I have 10 or 12? Oh, there's six on each side. Well, I'm smart. So even though they're completely safe if you connect one or two panels in series, because it only makes 40 to 50 volts, when you start getting into the hundreds range of DC voltage, it can be just as deadly as AC, so be careful. I'm going to have to use a lot of protection on this because I'm going to be vaporized if I touch this. Let's unjumble this mess of wires. So each solar panel has a positive, fuck it's a negative, a positive and a negative, and we're going to connect them together. Just kidding, don't do that. Instead of connecting them together, which would probably damage the panels, we're gonna connect them to each other. So the negative will go to the positive of another one. Okay, negative, positive. So once you make the first connection, you gotta start being really careful because it's not one panel anymore. It's two, three, or as many as you add in series. And this can be really dangerous because if you connect the wrong connection and short circuit all 10 panels, you're gonna get some serious arcing going on and it can probably burn your hands. All right, let's connect the rest. There we go. It's still a jumbled mess of wires, but at least they're all connected. And here are the danger wires. Should we measure the voltages? Hell yeah, we should. All right, I got a multimeter. This one's pretty old, but these ones are always the best. So let's test it. I'm gonna switch it to 200. Nah, we're switching it to 1 kV, baby. Oh, 315 volts. Hell yeah. That's gonna make a serious arc. This is gonna be awesome. All right, now comes the fun and the scary part. I gotta strip these. All right, jumper cables. Pretty secure. All right, so as you know, we have 300 volts passing through these wires at around seven amps. And that is a ton of electricity. So what are we gonna use as electrodes? Steel? Nah, this is gonna melt. Tungsten? No, it's just gonna vaporize. So what we're gonna use is this huge graphite rod. And I got this from BigAssGraphiteRods.com. Just kidding, that's not a site, I got it on eBay. So we're just gonna cut this thing in half and connect each side to the clamps. And then we're gonna put it inside the crucible and see if we can strike an arm. That snapped surprisingly easily. All right, plus. Okay. Let me go get some more protective gear on and I'm gonna see if I can strike an arc with these things. All right, I'm all dripped out in my protective gear, so let's give this a shot. You ready? All right, so this is a project for my next video, but we're actually gonna just be using the crucible from it. Here we have a one kilogram ceramic crucible. We got a crucible right here, and let's see if we can strike an arc inside of it. So 300 volts and some water. What would happen? Oh wow. Oh, look at that, it's orange now. Okay, so I'm having a problem getting the arc to go down into the crucible. So I think what I'm gonna do is get one of the things I used in my last video, which was a chemistry stand. There we go, a self-sustaining arc. All right, we made molten aluminum. Awesome, let's pour it. Let's pour it into this jug right here. There we go, it melted aluminum. And I know you guys think I'm crazy because I just picked that crucible up with my hands but you always need to know the limitations of your equipment. And these gloves take about three or four seconds for the heat to travel through them and burn me. So I had about three or four seconds to pour that before I even felt the heat. And then when the heat comes through, I can just take off the gloves, so. 
So what I didn't show was the 30 minutes I had to leave the crucible in there for it to heat up and just melt the aluminum. And that took a really long time to just melt aluminum, so I'm pretty sure it's not going to be able to do copper, brass, and definitely not steel. So I'm going to move over to a power supply and see if we can do those. But first, let's get a thumbnail with the solar panels. Alright, let's hook up the external power supply, put away these panels, and start melting brass or even steel. So here I've got a cheap 160 amp welder, and this is at like 40 volts AC, and it's only costs like 160 bucks. So let's hook it up. I've got it connected to the jumper cables now, and we're going to strike an arc inside the crucible and hopefully melt some brass or maybe even steel. Get the safety equipment back on, welding helmet check, leather apron. What's on the menu today? How about some shitty wrenches? And the only reason I'm wearing an apron is because I'm pretty sure striking an arc of this creates UVC rays or some kind of UV rays and it'll give you a really bad sunburn. There we have molten steel. Alright, so we know we can melt steel, but it was extremely difficult, and all we got was just these little chunks. So it wasn't really worth it, and it took like four or five minutes of just straight arc to melt the steel. So we're gonna put in some copper in the form of braided strips, and we're gonna melt these. Okay, that should be molten copper right there. Let's see. I guess not. Well, it's kind of molten copper, but it's still in strand form, and I can definitely still squish it. So, I'm not sure why the copper didn't work, since it has a melting point below steel. But, I guess we'll revisit this in another video. So, right now, the way I get money for videos, is I actually sell off the old video projects. So I get all the parts to build something, I make a video on it, and then I disassemble it and take it apart. Just like the solar panels. These solar panels right here, I got them a good deal off Craigslist, and the ones in the last solar video are long gone. This has worked pretty well for all of my smaller projects, but I'm wanting to get into bigger projects. But as I get into bigger projects, it gets to be a lot more expensive. For instance, if I wanted to build an electric go-kart. So if you guys want to see bigger projects and help out the channel, go check out the Patreon link. It's in the description. So right now, all the money I'm making on Patreon, which is currently, I think, 8 or $9 a month, is going straight to buying parts for these videos on eBay. That's it for this video. I hope you guys liked it, and no, I did not burn my hand while making the outro.